All right, honey, why did you decide to do a quiz instead of us just talking about men are different than women, period, in a discussion? That would be it. That would be it. I wanted, I wanted to be more specific, and I wanted to help um, men and women, maybe that are listening or watching um, our YouTube channel or listening to our podcast, I want them to better understand each other. Hello, this is Darren. And this is Paige. And this is Where's, Where's the, the lemonade? lemonade? Where we talk about what happens when life throws you lemons. Make some lemonade? Uh, maybe. Some weeks it's lemon squares. Yeah, some weeks it's just lemons. Yeah. <laughs> On today's episode... Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Okay, honey, why did you pick men are from Mars and women are from Venus? Because uh, you're out of town and I started thinking about what we should do for the podcast. And then I started thinking about how different we are. Yeah, there you go. That happens every time I leave town. She thinks about how different we are. <laughs> and I just started thinking about like when you're gone, stuff that you normally do when you're here and. So I just started thinking about the differences between men and women, and then I just started, and then I went, wait, that men are from Mars. I know this is this is kind of, uh, you think that the youngins even know about men are from Mars? Women are I don't Venus? know if they know that book. I mean, that book was very famous in the 80s and 90s. It was. Right? Or was it, it just was. the and 90s? Maybe it was just the 90s. I, I remember when it came out, so. Yeah, and I know there's like a game Men are from Mars, women are oh, from Oh, we Venus. should get the game, too. We should get the game. It'd be fun. Yeah, play with our so, friends. I don't know. So I just started thinking about that, and then I just decided to... That the research department, which didn't <laughs> research when Men are from Mars, women are from Venus was written, should really fire them. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why. Just so, was thinking about our differences, honey. Oh, great. So just what I want. <laughs> so, all right. So here's, here's the big question. What did you find online? Did, did you just type that into chat GPT or did you find an article? What would, what'd you find in your vast research? I'm sorry. No, I did not use chat GPT. I have failed you. I put no, it into you fail me. I put it into Google. I know you would rather that is not my go-to yet. I have to make it my go-to. I just typed it into Google and just said men are from Mars, women are from Venus quiz. And yeah, it gave me pages and pages of different quizzes, relationship quizzes and, you know, all kinds of quizzes. So that's okay, what we're so going to do. Is, we're that gonna, what we're, is that what we're doing on our episode today is taking a quiz? We're taking a little quiz. Okay. Yep. So if you want to take this quiz with your spouse, go to our website, where's eliminate.org. The quiz will be there. Yep. Um, you can take the quiz, see how good you do. And then the answers are are available as well. Well, the answers with explanations. Yes. Cause, oh, you know. even better. Yeah. Now, so. hey, one, one thing we talked about, these are generalizations. Huge generalizations. I mean, just like you do most of the cooking, right? So that would not be a, a stereotypical relationship stereotypically the woman would do most of the cooking and the in man American wouldn't. culture, but in Tongan yes. culture, the men do all the cooking. Oh, see, you, is that why, yeah. is that why you like to do the cooking? You're, you're getting in touch with your Tongan roots. I'm getting in touch with my Tongan roots. I do have a lava lava. That I'm going to wear. I know it's, it's hot outside. So maybe I should wear it to church. A little, my, a little air form. down there. Yeah. All right, honey, why did you decide to do a quiz instead of us just talking about, Men are different than women, period, in a discussion. That would be it. That would be it. I wanted, I wanted to be more specific, and I wanted to help um, men and women, maybe that are listening or watching um, our YouTube channel or listening to our podcast, I want them to better understand each other. So, and this quiz, it's meant to be a lighthearted quiz, um, quiz, but it's also supposed to be informative. And apparently the experts, 
not us, we're not experts, but the experts say that um, if you understand each other better, then it might bring you closer together. What do you think? Do you think that's true, no, Darren? I, I think that's true. I, I do, because if you say, well, hey, my wife is wired a certain way, then it helps me understand a little bit better, right? Because Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Instead of just going like, she is crazy, or he is so, you know, blah, blah, blah. We write, instead of just emotional. being like, yeah, like, oh my goodness. So if you can maybe understand the mechanics and emotions and genetics and, you know what I mean? All of that behind men and women, maybe we can understand each other better. So, so this quiz has like, like physical traits that are different between men and women as well as emotional yeah. and uh-huh it does it oh, does interesting. It's, it's, i actually have not i was talking to our daughter madeline about this just like an hour ago she was like oh well does it ask about this and i said i actually haven't read i read maybe the first three questions but i wanted to not read the questions because i wanted to be as surprised as you were so i haven't read most of these questions oh man this is going to be a doozy of so, an episode. It is. So we are going to see these together because I wanted to also be just, you know. Okay. So at the, end, at the end of the quiz, are we going to ask, does this help me? Let's ask that at the end of the quiz. We're going to ask, do you understand me better afterwards? <laughs> okay. We will right, let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. If you are enjoying today's episode, Check out our website at wheresalemonade.org where you can book us to come to your conference, your event, your workshop. We can't wait to see you. All right, let's take the quiz now. All right, you ask the first question okay. and then we'll both answer it. Okay, so this one, this is super interesting. I did, this, I did read this question and I didn't really understand it. It says, is the basic brain pattern that we have from conception male or female? So okay. when I read that, I was like, what? And then I thought, why does that even matter? Who cares? I'm not one of those people that needs to go back to, I have trauma because I was born. And <laughs> it was traumatic. We are, you know, I'm definitely not like that. So I was just like, what? But then when I read the answer, I understood it. So I, don't ha I didn't have an answer to this question because I thought it was a weird question. Did you well, have an answer? I didn't, when, you know, when I read it too, because you said, read the first question. Yeah. That's basic brain. So this goes all the way back to conception. Right? Yes. So egg and sperm come together, boom, baby happens. The brain starts to form right away. Is it male or female at the very beginning? I would say yeah. it's the same. That's what I would say. Okay. Well, the answer is, all brains are initially initially female but for males it changes from six weeks after conception and men's brains develop differently clearly because men's brains change there is more potential for wider extremes of brain capabilities therefore more men are likely to be geniuses or mentally handicapped interesting isn't that interesting so there's like so men have this wider range of extremes i i have i have seen that I, I saw i saw an iq um bell curve of men versus women okay the, men, the men's bell curve is flatter and wider meaning really more more um higher iqs and more lower iqs and general is uh is a a a lower population and women's tends to be not as wide but much more concentrated in in general intelligence so that explains this that, that explains yeah. this um theory so when i read that question i was oh. just like this is stupid why do we need to know this and then when i read the answer i went you know what that's kind of interesting that's kind of interesting well yeah. all right so there's your first one there's a lot more variety of intelligence in men than in women yeah yeah okay. yeah all right, very interesting. All right, next question. I'm going to read this one because I know okay. the answer to this one. Who are more likely to be colorblind, men or women? What do you think? Well, I already knew the answer to this question because we have so many men in our family that are colorblind. Yes, we do. <laughs> but uh, I already know the answer to this is men. It absolutely is. And it, it's because uh, colorblindness is a sex trait gene. Um, so, yeah. And when you said men in our family, 
all my boys are colorblind to some degree. Yeah, they are. Right. And, are. and none of your boys, mm -hmm. right? Nope. And none of our girls, um, jointly, number, none of our girls. So, all right. So this that says over 10% per, over 10 of men are at least partially colorblind and very few women are. Is that why we can't match our clothes appropriately? Maybe. Is that why you always pick black socks with your blue pants and blue socks with your black pants and you never know this until we get to church? <laughs> and oh. I, go, I think that's just because I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> Except I've been trying harder because you and the girls tease me about it all the time. So We do. We get to church and you cross your leg and we go, Darren. Those are navy blue socks with your my black slacks. <laughs> Yep. But yeah, I don't think you care. No. Maybe I we'll don't. talk about that later in the quiz about oh, okay. why. There you go. <laughs> why women care and men don't. Who knows? Okay, next okay. one. Your turn. Number three. Who have better spatial awareness? Men. Totally Is men. Is that what you think? That's yeah. what I think. Yeah, I would probably I would probably say that as well. I would probably say that as well. Definitely. Well, in general, I, I, I know this because right? I read a study at MIT. They took uh, men and women, and they walked them on, on underground uh, in the underground part of campus, um, okay. and walked them around, and then told them you got to get back to where you were. And oh, um, interesting. The the number of men that were able to do it was much higher than women. Um, and like I said, this is a generality, so it's it's not true for everyone. But right when, when you run the statistics, uh, men have better spatial. Uh, reasoning or awareness, I guess is the right. Right. Word. Yeah. It says, it says the answer is men. Um, and it says men find it easier generally to park a car or to reverse it. Ooh. And I would have to say, I would have to say in my life, typically men are more confident at driving than women. Do you mean like women may be better drivers because they're more cautious but men are, they're confident, they're, they're like, I got this, where I think women are, you know, we're a little more hesitant. So that's interesting that, that it's maybe because of the spatial awareness thing. I that's never thought of that, but that could, yeah. that could be it, right? Yeah. Our brains are yeah. different, so maybe. Our brains oh. are different. Yeah. Oh, interesting. interesting. I never thought of it. Are you still there? You're still listening? Oh, good. You can check out whereselemonade.org for more episodes, as well as advice and tips and tricks. There you go. All right, next one. How do women shop? Oh, on Amazon all the time. There yeah. you go. How? How? How so, they open up, they turn their phone on <laughs> and hit the Amazon app. That's how. <laughs> that actually came up. I was speaking at a conference today and it was it was at the AWS summit, which was hilarious. And um on the panel there were men and women. And uh, we, we were talking about um, data collection and things like that. And the women goes, oh, Amazon has all my data and all my shopping habits. And if they're not there three times a day, then they call me and say, is everything okay at your house? <laughs> so there you go. So, all right. So what's yeah. the answer to this one? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. It says that women find shopping relaxing, rejuvenating trying on different clothes, right? This is relaxing. This is rejuvenating. It can be unstructured and it doesn't need a definite outcome. It says this does not apply to food shopping though. Oh, hate food shopping. Oh, that is so but true. Isn't that interesting? So women, which I think you know this about me and maybe, I don't know that you knew this a ton about women until you married me, that it is like, I mean, I, it makes me happy to buy something new clothes. It makes me happy to shop. And even if we do get things for the house, that makes me happy. Like I'm like, woo. Like yeah, it is. And it, I noticed, I noticed about you. Um, also you like to try things on and I've learned, I love watching you try things on. I love watching how happy it makes you. Um, so I've learned to enjoy that part of shopping with you. I know a lot of men don't like shopping with their wives because of that. Um, but I've learned cause you light up, you really light up. 
And I enjoy seeing you. Yeah, if I put something on that I feel good and I come out and I'm like, hi, what do you think? Do you like it? I know. Yeah. (laughs) Then I know whether it looks bad or good. The answer is you look great. (laughs) If I have a smile on my face. If you have a smile, (laughs) if if you have a frown on your face, then I can say, ooh, why don't you try the next thing? Yeah. Yeah. But no, you, you are, I think, an outlier when it comes to men. You do like shopping and i like shopping with you we don't shop too much anymore in the stores because i get most of my stuff off of amazon i know maybe we need to do that on a date let's do do the shopping Um, date again we've done that before we have and you um yeah you don't you like to go shopping i like shopping with you because you spend more money than i would for sure like if i go shopping with you then (laughs) if i try something on and i'm like oh but that dress is a hundred dollars and you're like so what? It looks great on you. Where if I was by myself, I would not have bought that dress. But you because you're with deals. me, you're like, yeah. And you're like, no, let's get it. I'm like, okay. Okay. So. I think that goes to the next question, which is okay. how do men shop? So my general, answer to that, my answer to that would have been um, not often and quickly. That's what I would have said. Well, and I would say the same thing. I have an objective. I want to get there, get it done, and 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 get out and. But that's when I'm shopping for myself. If I'm shopping with you, my objective is very different. My objective is making you happy or what's helping you be happy. Because I love seeing it when you smile. You've got an incredible smile. So I love that. Oh, you're so sweet. But I think you, like I said, I think you're an outlier for the men because I think most men do not like to go shopping with their wives. Clothes shopping at least. Then men change your attitude. Go places that make her happy. So right, that just makes it makes everybody yeah. happy, and, and vice versa. Right, women need to do things that make their husband happy. If their husband wants to go to the to Best Buy, or I don't know what's another man thing, the hunting store or the sporting yeah, the sports, goods store, sporting goods store. Yeah, you know, go with them, go with them, and watch them get excited. No, that, right, that's a good idea. So the answer to how do you men shop is it says men shop with definite objectives and a timetable. <laughs> the quicker, the better. And that is usually typical, especially if you, yeah, if you are shopping for you and I'm not with you, like there's been times where you've been on a trip and you're like, oh shoot, I forgot a shirt or I forgot a tie. And you're I like, in, I get it, come out. <laughs> like the quicker, the better, right? Yeah. Does it fit? Because- I don't know. That doesn't need to fit. So that's interesting because, so that's a huge difference. Women, we're rejuvenated. We're relaxed to shop and men are like, let's go, let's go. So that is a big difference. And maybe that can help. Maybe now that we have pointed that out, I mean, I know people already know this, but that it's an actual physical psychological difference between men and women. Well, you get endorphin, you get an endorphin release when you shop. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's actual physical that maybe men and women can help, can understand each other better. Okay. Right? Great. All right. Next question. I know this one too. Whose skin is more sensitive to the touch, men or women's? Pages is the answer. <laughs> There's no men or women here. Paige is very sensitive to the touch, right? I am very sensitive to the touch. And I always say, I wish you could understand how my skin feels just for a day because I always think that you think I'm a wimp. I never said that. And I don't You've never, that. you have never said that, but I, I am very sen- I mean, My skin bruises. It hurts. Like if I get pinched, it hurts. And I'm like, that hurts <laughs> where you are, I mean, you come in from the garage and you'll have some cut on your arm. And I'm like, honey. And you're like, it's fine. Yeah. No, where I'd be like, oh, like, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Why is that? So what's the answer to this one? It's women. It, women. Women's skin is more sensitive typically. Yeah. It says their skin is thinner. It says they also they have an extra layer of fat beneath it, which adds to beauty in youth and wrinkles in old age. Oh, that's interesting. Because of our extra layer of fat, that means in old age, we actually get more wrinkles than men. Wow. Life is unfair. That is not cool. (laughs) Not cool. (laughs) Okay, next. not cool. Yeah, next one. We're going to move off that topic because that's going to go down (laughs) a spiral. I don't want to (laughs) go. Yep, move on, move on. 
If you are enjoying today's episode, check out our website at wherestheLemonade.org where you can book us to come to your conference, your event, your workshop. We can't wait to see you. Who feels the cold more? Oh, I see this at now, work. What would you say though? Without seeing this answer, what Without would you? What would you answer? Have said? I would say it would be women. Yes, same. I would have. I would say women definitely. Women are always like, oh, in restaurants, yeah, at, I'm so cold. At, at work, I see. I see it at work. A lot of women have a sweater that they put on the back of their chairs, because at work they keep the temperature like 72 degrees or something like that. And most of the guys I see at work are in shorts and a t-shirt and the women will come in and they'll put their sweater on uh, to stay warm. So is that the right answer? No. What? The answer, I know, right? I would have 100, like I literally would have been 100% the answer is women. It is men. It says because they lack that layer of fat. Oh, the layer of fat that's on there. Interesting. But it says, but because of it, women have the greater problem with hot temperatures. So that's interesting because I don't know that I agree with this. I, most women I know, we've always got a sweater or a jacket for backup. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just because we women are more like we care about how we feel physically more than men. Does that make sense? Like, I'm like, I'm cold. I'm miserable. I don't like this. Where men are like, I'm cold. Oh, well, what do you think about that? I don't you know, know I mean? is that a question in here or is this just a generalization? I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea. I'm just asking. Do you I, know I, what think, I, mean? I think probably so. I, I I think that might be true. We're just, we're bigger complainers. No, I don't we're know. not bigger complainers. You care about comfort and style more. Yeah, than yes. Men. We care about comfort more than men. Right. And I've seen that even with our boys. I'm like, aren't you guys freezing? Ah, it's fine. Now, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. No. And all the girls are like, Ah, so, so interesting. So for me to combat the cold, I need to put some weight on. That's what I just heard. To get an extra layer of fat. I don't yeah. like that answer. No, you don't like that attitude. Okay. No, I, I won't like have that, that attitude. Okay. Next. Who's better at reading body language? Women oh, or men? Now I would say one million percent women. Absolutely. Absolutely. One million percent that we just know how to read, we, we know how to read a room in general, where a lot of times men, I feel like are a little more oblivious. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, in general, yeah, I would say yeah, we, we don't read the body language nearly as much. Yeah, and the answer is women, yes. And, yeah, and the answer is women. All right, yeah. next question, honey, go for it. Who are better at distinguishing between high-pitched noises? <laughs> what, what'd you say, high-pitched noises? <laughs> That's such a funny question. Like, and I, it, I, th I'm just thinking about this question. It's the first time I've seen this question. What does that matter? I think why, it matters why a lot. You, okay. So tell me why you think it matters. Uh, baby's crying. Cause th think about, think about the uh, biology of it. When a baby cries, the mother knows, right? It's probably time to feed the baby, right? And that, that means, hey, I've got to produce milk. I've got to do something. Your body's going to react to those higher pitch noises. I think with men, the higher pitch noises are, there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to block it out. It's just going to go away. So I think we're kind of wired that way. That is super interesting. So yes, the answer is women that are oh. better at distinguishing. That's interesting. Super interesting. All right, go ahead and read the next one. All right. Who are better at identifying where sounds come from? Now that is interesting. So this like, goes, I think the answer goes back to the spatial, the spatial awareness. Mm. Okay. So I think men do. Is spatial awareness the same thing as like knowing, uh, like a directional? To, yeah, it has to do that, with understanding similar? the relationship between things in three dimensional space. Okay. Cause you know this about me, you know, like when we go into a hotel, Oh, you get lost. If I am not the one paying attention, like if I'm up by myself or just with the kids, no problem because I'm paying attention. But if I'm with you, I come out of our hotel room like every single day and you go, you always say to me, okay, Paige, which way should we go? And I'm like, right. And you're like, nope, left. Like, I just don't, it, it, it typically seems that men are better at directions than women. I, in I, think, I think this goes to that spatial awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 
So I think that height, that same thing comes with where do sounds come from. It, we, we, there's something in our brains like that yeah. understand 3D space better, I, I, I guess. That's interesting. So like if we hear a cricket, men are going to be better at finding where that cricket noise is coming from. Ooh, we should try that out. <laughs> Let well, you know, this, let's not believe the survey. Let's try it out. Well, this, we'll is how exci- this is how exciting we are. We're going to play cricket noises in our house. And, and see who see- can find them first. <laughs> yep. We are exciting. Hey, watch for that short. We'll do a short on that. That'll be fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, next one. Who have the lower pain threshold? So what would you say? Without seeing the answer, what would you say? Well, knowing that women can push a bowling ball out between their legs, I would say women have a higher pain threshold than men in general. Yeah, I would. Yes, I would say that in general. Yes. Like, so I would it, say men have a lower pain threshold. That's what I would say. Yeah, lower have a, have a, it's interesting because like, yes, I pushed out four children and I've had kidney stones. I, you know, I've had diverticulitis. I've had all these very extreme painful things, painful things. And I feel like I can handle those way better than I can the little things. Like when I get a little cut or a little bruise or I'm like, oh, oh, right? Isn't that so true? That is so true. And yet I'm like, hey, Darren, I'm passing a kidney stone. And you're like, and you're just like walking around. I pass kidney stones too. (laughs) Let me tell you, I was curled up in the fetal position. Yes, you were. Saying, take me to the hospital now. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And I'm like, hmm. So it's interesting that, but maybe that goes back to my skin being sensitive though. So that is so right? bizarre, right? If women's skin is more sensitive, but they can But our really internal more... organs aren't. Our internal organs are hardy. Hardy. <laughs> right, I love the answer that they say here. They say men have a lower pain threshold, except when focused on a physical task or a sporting activity. Oh, now that is interesting. So So if if, if we focus and we know we have to get a task done, we push the the pain aside and we can can get through it. That is super interesting. Are you still there? You're still listening? Good. You can check out whereseleminate.org for more episodes as well as advice and tips and tricks. There you go. Who are better able to discern salty or bitter taste? Ooh. I, I would have said, I, my answer would be women. I, I would think so too. I think women are more sensitive to taste and smell. Right. Yes. I, I would totally say that. However, the answer is men, which I don't know. I, just because a lot of men that I know... They're like, I mean, like you will eat anything. And I know a lot of men that are like that. Like a lot of men that I know are just like, they eat like at dinner, right? They order this, their wife orders. And then they say, what other meal would you want? And they order the second meal that their wife would want just in case she doesn't like her meal. Yeah. (laughs) Because they're just like, we'll eat anything. But this is, I guess this is just saying salty or bitter. This isn't just saying... Yeah, I guess this is... This okay, just, saltier, bitter, so men. And the yeah. next question is a corollary to that, which is... Who are better able to discern sweet taste? Well, we all know the answer to that. Yeah, that one's women, for sure. That is women. And then it says, hence, chocoholics. Interesting. <laughs> well, that's interesting because bitter, chocolate is bitter. It can be. It like, can well, be. It doesn't the, have to the be. The more pure yeah. the chocolate, the more bitter it is, right? Right. Yes. But we get it all, you know, sugared up. So All sugared up. There you go. Okay. Yes. Ne- next one fits in the same category. Who have a finer sense of smell? Women. Oh, for sure. please. One million percent women. One million percent women. Yeah, you can smell the stinky teenage boys in our house walking around the corner before I even know they're around. Seriously, when they get in the car, after I used to pick them up when they were smaller, from school and they get in the car and I'm like, you smell like outside. Like (laughs) you smell like outside. Yes. I definitely feel like women have a finer sense of smell. I wish I didn't trust me. I wish I didn't. Well, that's why you always say 
hey, if you want to get if you want to get hugs and kisses from me, put cologne on. I do tell you that. I tell you that if you want my physical attention, please my nose. Good, oh man, when a man walks by me and smells good, I'm like, ooh. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> when I walk by you and smell good. <laughs> That is the correct answer to this one. Yes, yes, yes. When you walk by me, yes, that is what I said. Isn't that what I said? That's what I said. Yeah, I'm sure that's what you said. <laughs> okay, next one. Now, this might be controversial, but it is just a fact. Who have more brain cells? I refuse to answer that direction. I was going to say, be I careful. I refuse to answer you... that question. Because it might be held against you. It might be held against me in a court of law someday. <laughs> so I, I honestly, without knowing the answer, I would have said men. Why would you have said that? Um, I feel like more the, a lot of men, more than women that I know, um, like more brainy things like math and science and now obviously i mean we have two daughters that are math teachers so i'm saying say, honey that is very yeah, no. stereotypical i and are we talking about stereotypical yeah yeah we are yeah we are talking about stereotypical we do have two daughters that are math teachers so there are obviously outliers but i'm just saying in general for me men the, the men that i know are very much into very almost scientific -y. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does. This may also have to do with, and the, the, the answer is yes, it is men, approximately 4 billion more than women. That's a substantial- 4 billion more brain cells than women. Yeah, that's-, so that's a No one get mad at us. It is literally a fact. Like we are not, it's just a fact. Well, this is interesting because that may, those brain cells don't mean they're all being used, obviously. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. But th I think that's why we have such a, a larger a statistical variation in IQ in men than in women is mm. you've got more you've got more there to do with. So you can either be dumber or smarter with those other four billion. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Just because you have more brain cells doesn't mean you're smarter. You just have more brain cells, I you guess. Just right? have more brain cells. Well, hey, yeah. hey, and more of us to lose. Uh, when we smash our head into a wall or, you know, whatever, when we're there, you go. Boys and do there dumb you go. Things. If you're still hanging in there with us on this episode and you've gotten this far, go to where's lemonade.org send us a little message. We'll send you a candy. A real, really a candy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Our lemonade moment of the week. What you got baby. So today is our daughter, Rachel's birthday and she has three little kids and, um, they were trying to decide for her birthday dinner tonight, were they going to go out to dinner or were they going to get takeout? She's like, obviously I'm not cooking. It's my birthday. <clears throat> and so sometimes the kids are not great, right? She has three little kids when they go well, out to dinner. She's got three kids under the age of eight. I mean, yes. So it, it cannot be, be fun, hard. right? They can, right. they're, they're just normal kids. So she went and <clears throat> asked the kids, she said, kids, what do you think? We're thinking of going out to dinner tomorrow night for mom's birthday. What do you think? And Emma, who is the eight-year-old, she's like, yes, yes, please. I want to go out to dinner. <clears throat> and Zoe, who is five, she said, Emma, you are not the problem when we go out to dinner. Mitchell and I are the problem. <laughs> so I don't think you should be making this decision because you are not the problem. Mitchell and I are the problem. So I thought that was hilarious um, that our, is, you know, that she is aware that she's the problem and yeah, that she can articulate that she's she the can problem. Articulate. I think that's hilarious. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. What a great lemonade. So what'd so, she decide to do? So they decided to get takeout. Russell was going to bring home dinner um, and they were going to eat at home. So, the lemon is that they didn't go out to dinner, but the lemonade is that they got to eat dinner at home. She didn't have to cook dinner. So, and we got to tell a funny Rachel. story about a, a five year old we, being self aware. That's right. That's right. <laughs> They're so cute. So, happy birthday, Rachel. We love you. Happy birthday, Rachel.
If you like today's episode, give us five stars on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and head to Facebook and like us. And check out our blog at wheresthelemonade.org, where you can leave questions and comments. And, but most of all, go out and make some lemonade. You betcha, baby. Yeah.